This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Just a very special announcement. First of all, Hazak Baruch, Rabbi Golwasser, thank you for the tremendous zechut to our community. We love you. Thank you. Um, okay, so just uh, on behalf of Torah Anytime, uh, uh, celebrating our 13th year, our bar mitzvah uh, in existence, Baruch Hashem, it started right here in this community in Queens. Uh, we have a gift for everyone. So a few months ago, Torah Anytime started something very new and very special that's been a tremendous success. It's, it's called the Torah Anytime Daily Dose. And some of you are getting it every morning, and it's changing your day uh, in an incredible way, as we know. What this is, is we take the very best speakers of the world, like Rabbi Golwasser and many others, we take the very best speeches of these best speakers, and we take the very best two or three minutes of these best speeches from these greatest speakers, and we put very emotional music to it, and in the end of the, the two, three minute clip, we write a sentence, a takeaway, that's going to change your life forever. And these doses got, come into your WhatsApp every morning. And the feedback we've been getting from the entire world has been amazing. So I'm going to ask everyone to do something that you usually don't hear someone to ask you to do in a shul. I'm going to ask everyone right now, this very moment, each one of you, and every, all of you watching on Torah anytime right now, please take out your phones. Please, right now, for a moment, take out your phones. I'm going to give you the instructions what to do. It takes a few seconds. This one action that you'll do right now is going to give you something that's going to change your day every single day, Bezat Hashem. So what I want you to do is take out your phones and program this number I'm about to say into your phones. And the name, and you're going to save this number in your contacts. And the, the name of this contact, you're going to put Torah Anytime Daily Dose. Torah Anytime Daily Dose. I'm going to repeat the number three times. And if you still have trouble doing it, I'll be here throughout the, the day, the, the night. Uh, you come up to me and I'll help you do it. The number is 929-355-4268. Again, program this number into your phone. Call the Torah anytime, daily dose. 929-355-4268. I'll repeat it one last time for everyone. 929 355 4268. Program that number into your contacts. Call it the Torah Anytime Daily Dose. That's part one. Part two is go into WhatsApp and message that number, the words add me, A D D M E. Go to WhatsApp, message that number you just saved, the words add me. You have to do both these steps in order for this to work. I encourage not everyone, not only everyone here and everyone watching should do it right now. But every day, try to find someone that doesn't have this and do it for them. It's one of the greatest gifts you can give anyone. So again, if you need help doing it, let me know. I'll be here. Now I'd like to introduce someone very special to, to us personally as Torah Anytime. Rabbi Gladstein is going to be our next speaker. And Rabbi Gladstein, without any exaggeration, is one of the most popular speakers on the entire website from over a thousand speakers. And a tremendous uh, zuchut for us to, to, to have him be on the Torah Time family. And also, Rabbi Gladstein, recently a new sefer came out uh, uh, about the high holidays. And even though we're already at the end of the high holidays, I'm sure it's a sefer that you could benefit throughout the year. So I, I personally encourage everyone here, everyone watching on Torah Time, go out and get this new sefer by Rabbi Gladstein. Um, and it, it's, it's sure to be something that's going to give you chizik throughout the year as well. Majesty. Thank you. The mystery and the majesty. Thank you. And you had a very majestic title. Thank you for that. Yes, from Art School. So, Bechavo, without any further ado, Rabbi Gladstein. So, do you want me to read it? Yeah, do you need this or not? No, yeah. Okay, Bruchim Abom, welcome everyone. Bershus, the Mar Asr Shlita, the Rav, the Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Chaimov. It's really a pleasure to be in his Makam Tar and his Beis Hamedrash. It's already maybe six, seven, eight years that I've had this chus to be doing this. And even though I try to move away, 
But Rabbi Chaimov made sure that his son-in-law would move right next door to me so that we should remain Shechinim. And Rabbi Chaimov told me that he passed by my house today even. He wanted to make sure that I would come back, but he didn't have to come. I was going to come anyway. It's, uh, it's part of the program. So on this uh, occasion, the whole Kehillah, we want to offer a Berchaz Hedyot to the Rav that he should have good health and gesund and nachas to see the growth of the shul and the yeshiva in good health. So today's, tonight's learning should be for Shalema, for Efrat, Bas, Ashra, Ephraim, Ben Yafa, Tzivya, Bas, Dora, and everyone in Klai Sohn is for Shalema, Lila Nishmas, Avner, Ben Miriam, Ben Yamin, Ben Freika, Haima, Freika, Haima, Harav, Hadayan, Simcha, Ben Mazal, Haima, Avram, Ben Rachel, Nasanaf, Sarah, Bas, Rachel, Ambalu, Gabriel, Halivi, Ben Mazal, Shlomo, Ben Mazal, Devar, Ben Sarach, before Shalema, Le'ilu Nishmasai, Abri Yaskal Tzedak. So, the Imre Emes has an astounding comment on the Gemara and Shabbos on Daf Lamed Aleph. The Gemara Shah says that after 120 years, one of the questions that they're going to ask is, Sipisal Yeshua, did you yearn, did you anticipate the coming of the Geula, the coming of Mashiach? So the Imre Emes learns that this question that every Jew is going to face after 120 is a question about tonight. Because they may not ask us, did we take advantage of Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah is a tough day. Rosh Hashanah, you have to be at Tzadik Omor. Tzadikim Gemurim, Nechtavim La'alter L'chaim. You have to be on a high level to be Zaycha on Rosh Hashanah. They may not ask us how we did on Yom Kippur. But there's a day that is a day of great salvation. Hashanah Rabbah, a great salvation. See, peace of Yeshua, after 120, one of the questions they're going to ask is, did you take advantage of Hashanah Rabbah? Because that we could all take advantage of. Even if you're in Arava, like Rabbi Goldwasser mentioned, even in Arava, even if we don't have Torah, even if we don't have mitzvahs, we could still take advantage of Hashanah Rabbah. So I want to do something a little bit off the beaten track. I want to speak about an episode that we speak about often on the Yom Naram, Certainly Rosh Hashanah, less on Yom Kippur, and rarely on Hoshana Rabbah, but this is an episode that we could trace back the central figure of Hoshana Rabbah to this episode. And that is tonight we invited a very important personality into our sukkah. We invited David HaMelech, King David. King David is our guest for the seventh day of sukkahs. So I want to speak today about the origins of David HaMelech. We once spoke on a Shavuos night about some of the mystical origins of David HaMelech. But now we're going to go back all the way to the beginning. We're going to speak about one of the most well-known episodes in the Torah, but I would like to revolutionize in a very novel way. I believe perhaps we never heard this approach to the story of the Akedah. And by learning a novel approach to the Akedah, we're going to revolutionize our understanding of David HaMelech and perhaps of Hoshana Rabbah as well. Uh, this will really elevate our appreciation of Hoshana Rabbah. So of course we know the Akedah begins, Abraham, God tested Abraham. And the first question we have to ask is, if you were to choose, who is the Rebun I'm going to be testing in this episode? Is God testing Abraham? Or is God testing Yitzchak? And they would ask you, fill, it, fill out the blank. Who is this a test for? Is this a test for Avram? Is it a test for Yitzchak? I would have thought this is a test either only for Yitzchak or at least also for Yitzchak. But why only Avraham? Avraham gets to go home and eat his suda. He gets to go home to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and enjoy the rest of his life. Yitzchak is the one who has his, ne- his neck slit open. Yitzchak is the one who's offered as a carbon. This is not a test for Abraham, this is a test for Yitzchak. It should have said, Oh, like Kim Nisa, as Abraham, yes, Yitzchak. This is the question of the Balei HaToysvis in the name of Rabbi Huda Chassid. That why does the Torah say, Oh, like Kim Nisa, as Abraham, at the very least, it should have said, Oh, like Kim Nisa, as Abraham, yes, Yitzchak. So God comes to Abraham and he says like this, Kachno es bincha, take your son. So Abraham says, I have two sons. So Hashem says, As yechidcha, take your only son. So, God sa- so Abraham says, they're both my only son. 
One is the only one to his mother, to Sarah. One is the only one to his mother, to Hagar. Asher Ahavta, take the one you love. So Avram says, I love both of them. Es Yitzchak, take Yitzchak. So Rashi asks, so God should, should not waste his words. Every word is counted, every word is numbered. It should say, Kach no es Yitzchak. So Rashi answers, that if Hashem would have said, Kach no es Yitzchak, people may have made a mistake and thought, that Avraham was startled. Avraham was so shocked by the request that he was bewildered, he was surprised, and Avraham went out of his mind. He went, Arois von Kalem. He lost his mind and he said, Fine, I'll take Yitzchak. So people would have thought Avraham did not make a conscious decision. So therefore, Hashem brought it on slowly. Kachna es bincha. Take your son. So Avraham's thinking, which one? And then he says, "Es yechidcha, your only one." So Avram's thinking, "Which one?" And then Hashem says, "Asher ahavta, the one that you love." So Avram had time to absorb it, to digest it, and make a, a thought-out, conscious decision. But why would Hashem have to do it this way? If Hashem wanted Avram to consider and absorb and digest the instructions, Hashem could have told Avram, "Avram." Sit down for a moment. I have something very important to tell you. And Avram could have said, what is it? I have a request that might be a little bit difficult. It might be hard for you. And Avram may ask, what is it? And Hashem could have said, you know, it's something that you really love. It's something very important to you. Maybe have a tea first, drink a coffee. Maybe do some breathing exercises. If the Rebbe Hashem wanted to bring this on slowly... He, should have, he could have chosen many ways to bring it on slowly. Why specifically? As bincha, as yechidcha, asher ahavta, as yitzchak. And now here's a question that will open up forever our understanding of the Akedah. Because the Pasuk says, Vayashkim Avraham Baboiker, Vayachavosh es Chamoiro, he saddled his donkey. Vayikach es Shnei he took with him his two lads. Which two lads? Rashi says, Eliezer, his servant, and Yishmael. Yeah, we're all familiar with that. We all know Yishmael came to the Akedah, right? Did you ever wonder, how did Yishmael come to the Akedah? Yishmael doesn't live at home anymore. Yishmael was thrown out of the house 35 years earlier, never ever to return to the house of Abraham Avinu. Remember when Sarah came into the house and she saw that Yishma was mitzachek, he was mocking, Rashi says he was murdering, he was committing adultery, he was serving Avoid Zara, and Sarah gave up psak halacha, Goresh es ben ha'amazos, kick the kid out of the house. None of this, you know, OTD will be nice to the kid, we'll let him have his own room and turn on the television on Shabbos and we'll make believe we ignore it and we'll be nice, we'll give him oh, no problem, no problem, and he'll come around. Kick the kid out of the house. The kid is a bad influence, get him out of here. And Abraham didn't want to. And it was very hard for Abraham. So God came to Abraham and he told her, he told him the message that I live by because my wife's name is Sarah also, Kol asher toimar elecha Sarah shema b'koyla. Whatever the lady says, you got to listen to her. So Avram says, what could I do? I don't agree with her. I think she's wrong. But God says, whatever Sarah says, she's right. So Avram took Yishmael, and he gave him some spending money, and he said, kid, get lost, don't let the door hit you on your way out. And he never returned. We don't hear from Yishmael again. Yishmael's name is not mentioned again in the Torah until the Akedah. So how did he get to the Akedah? Why is Avram taking him to Akedah? He's not in the house, he's thrown out. Hashem said, listen to Sarah. Goresh, and he went to live in Paran with all the uh, Mushchasim uh, cousins that we have. And he never returned. So Toysva says, a chidush nifla, Toysva says, a wondrous chidush. By the way, anyone here have kids in sleepaway camp? Yeah? What's the worst day of the summer? Visiting day. Right? You have to schlep up there, it takes five hours, and then you get to see your kid for an hour, 
and they were just becoming happy in camp, and after you visited them, now they're miserable, right? And then you drive back eight hours to the city. Says Toysvis, the day of the Akeda was visiting day. After 35 years, Yishmael came back into the house. Why? It must be, otherwise what's he doing there? Oh, says Toysvis. Now I understand when Hashem told Abraham, Es bincha, es yechidcha, asher ahavta, Abraham thought it was Yishmael. You know why Abraham thought it was Yishmael? Because Abraham says to himself, for the last 35 years, God did not come to me and say, sacrifice my kid. Why did God come to me this morning and say, sacrifice my kid? Because Yishmael came back last night. It must be God wants me to sacrifice Yishmael. Otherwise, why would Hashkocha have it that Yishmael should dafka return the night before? He, uh, why did the Rosh Hashem came to me last night? Yishmael hasn't been in the house for 35 years. He dafka came now. It must be Yishmael. So let's think for a moment. Why did God have it that specifically the night before the Akedah, Yishmael should return? And Avraham should mistakenly think that Rabbi wants him to sacrifice Yishmael. What does Yishmael got to do with the Akedah? Let's ask another interesting question. Don't answer yes to this question, but for those who study the Quran, you would know that there's a big difference between the Christian Bible and the Quran. And that is the Christian Bible does not tamper with the storyline. If you read, you know, you go to a hotel and you take out of the drawer, you know, the Bible, you read the story. Uh, God came to Abraham and He told Abraham, take your son, your only son, the son that you love, take Isaac and slaughter him and bring him up to the mountain. And Abraham took uh, Yishmael and he took Eliezer and he took Isaac and then he leaves them behind and he brings Isaac up to the altar and he's about to slaughter him and the angel cries out, don't touch him. And Avram puts down the knife the knife, and they walk away happily ever after. That's the story in the, old, in the Old Testament, the same story as we have. But open up the Quran, but don't. And in the Quran it says, And God came to Abraham, and He told Abraham, Take Yishmael, and bring him, take your son, your only son, the son that you love, Yishmael, and bring him up as a sacrifice. And Abraham took Yitzchak and Eliezer with him. And Avram left Yitzhak and Eliezer behind and he takes Yishmael and the angel cries out, don't touch him! Why is it so important that the Muslims, that the Arabs change this story? There's something about this story that's a thorn in their side. What is it about the Akedah that bothers them so much? Another question. Question of the Beis HaLevi. So, Avraham tells uh, Yitzchak, come on, we're going up to the mountain. And he turns to Eliezer and to Yishmael, and he says, Shavu lachem poyim achamar. Stay behind with the donkey. And the Gemara and Kedushin darshins that Yishmael is like a donkey. Why is he like a donkey? Says the Gemara and Kedushin. A son that is born from a non-Jewish woman is like a donkey. Am hadom elechamar. That if you have a child from a non-Jewish woman, the child has the same halachic status as a donkey. In other words, if you had nine people and you needed a center, you needed a tenth person, you can't get an oived gilulim, you can't get a donkey, and you can't get a, Jew, a boy who you as a Jew bore to a non-Jewish woman. That a child from a non-Jewish woman has a halachic status of, of a donkey. And the Beis Halevi asks, this is a beautiful limud, this is a critical limud, but why now? Why do Chazal need, why does Rebbe Hashem want to teach now, at the Akedah, that if you have a child from a non-Jewish woman, the child is like a donkey. We could teach this lesson in Parshas Kiseitse, in Parshas Acharei Mois, in Parshas Kadoshim, when we talk about Yisurei Arayos. Why in the Akedah do we need to know that Yishmael is like a donkey? Now here's the key, I believe. After the Akedah, the angel comes and the angel cries out, Ki varecha varechecha, I will bless you. 
And I will bless your children, I will increase your children like the stars, and like the sand on the sea. The Yiresh Zaracha and you, Avraham, your children will inherit a Shar Oyevav, the gate of your enemy. The word Oyevav is the key to understanding the Akedah. Because in Lashon HaKodesh, there are two ways to say enemy there's an Oyev and there's a Soine. They both mean enemy, but they have different connotations. There's an Oyev and a Soine. In fact, the, par- the Pasuk says in Parshish Nitzavim, V'nasan Hashem al-Oikecha es ha'olo al-Oyevecha v'al-Soineecha asher God will place all the curses on your enemies and on your enemies. And now we have to understand, who are the two enemies of the Jewish people? We have two job vacancies. You know, in the world of Rabbonus, when, there, when, when there's a shul that's looking for a rabbi, you'll get at least uh, 500 applicants. You know, 300 from Lakewood, and 100 from Tarvadas, and on, right? But when you want to be the enemy of the Jew, you can imagine how many people are applying for this job. You know how many people would like to be the enemy and the enemy, the Oyev and the Soine? You have North Korea, you have Syria, you have Germany, you have all the European countries. All, they all want to be the Oyev and the Soine. But say the Rishonim, there are only two nations that are eligible for this great job, Oyev and Soine, Esav and Yishma. Now we know that Esav has a specific name. Halacha biyadua she Esav Soine liyakai. Rashi brings down. I once heard somebody say, it's halacha l'moshe misinai that Esav hates Yaakov. No, that's, that's not what Chazal say. It's not halacha l'moshe misinai. Halacha biyadua. It's a fact of life. Esav soine Yaakov. By the way, who says halacha biyadua Esav soine Yaakov? Rab Shimon. My grandfather, he should live and be well. He's Kenai Nahara. should go get a bracha from him. He's going to be, he's well over a hundred. He was a student. He used to learn every day with Rabbi Nachum Zemba. Rabbi Nachum Zemba taught that why does Rabbi Shimon say Halacha biyadua she'esav son Eliakov? Because Rabbi Shimon holds we're doyresh time of the kra. Rabbi Shimon has an opinion that in the Gemara, whenever we have a pasuk, we could try to understand why Hashem said X, Y, and Z. But now, when it comes to anti-Semitism. When it comes to Esau's hatred of Yaakov, halacha biyadua, there's no rationale, there's no explanation, it's a fact of life. Even Reb Shimon, who has a reason for every mitzvah in the Torah, there's no reason why Esau hates Yaakov. He hates us when we're rich, he hates us when we're poor. He hates us when we're socialists, he hates us when we're, hates us when we're capitalists. There's no rationale, it's just a fact of life. So if Esau is a soine, then what's Yishmael? Yishmael is the Oyev. Rabbeinu Bechai writes, an Oyev is worse than a Soine. A Soine could sometimes be Merachim on you. An Oyev will never be Merachim on you. Rabbeinu Bechai writes, the word Oyev comes from the word Oyev Avoy. When you encounter this enemy, you just scream out Oyev Avoy. Yishmael is the prototypical Oyev Yisrael. Esav is a soine, Yishma is a oyev. Ah, if that's the case, what does it say at the end of the Akedah? Now that Avram, now that you pass the Akedah, Kivarech avarechecha, Vaharba arba zaracha kuchoich vea shamayim, Vichachor asha osvas hayom, Vihira zaracha ishar oyevav. Now that you pass the Akedah, you will ascend over Yishmael. In other words, the, the, the rights that the Jewish people have to Eretz Yisrael, and to be God's chosen people, when we're vying with Yishmael, the ascendancy of the Jewish people over Yishmael came through the Akedah. Now I want to say a chiddush. Rashi says in the beginning of the Akedah, Achar Hadvarim Ha'ela, after these words. Rashi says, we know after these words imply something happened, and the Akedah is coming in the aftermath of that. Says Rashi in his second shot. The Akedah comes in the aftermath of a discussion between Yitzchak and Yishmael. Yishmael says to Yitzchak, Yitzchak, you think you're a grace, a knacker? 
You know what that means? It's a French expression, right? You think you're a, you think you're a big shot. You think you're a big time. Why, why, why are you such a big bagaiva? Because you had bris mila at 8 days old? I had bris mila at 13 years old. You're nothing. Your mesiras nefesh, your self-sacrifice is nothing. I'm greater than you. And because my sacrifice is greater than you, I have rights to Eretz Yisrael. So Yitzchak says, Azoi, if God would command me to be slaughtered, I would do it. You ready for this? You know why it doesn't say, Velikim Nisas, Yitzchak? It's not a test for Yitzchak. Yitzchak just made a neder. He just made a vow. He said, God, if God would tell me to slaughter myself, if God would say to sacrifice myself, I would do it. So Yitzchak just said, Harei Olai Karben. Yitzchak took a neder that if God would say to be shechted, he would do it. So God said, so go do it. It's not a test. Imagine if a guy gets up in shul. They sell over here chas, chas and taira? Avada. Avada. So let's say a guy gets up in, in shul. He says, $50,000 to Yeshiva Oal Simcha for Chas and Taira. That's good, it's good. good. It's a good price. More, right? No. <laughs> 50, you, the Rav will take half this year, half next year. 50000 And then a letter comes down from Shamayim that uh, Rabbi Yid, we're testing you. Are you going to give? It's not a test, he just took a nether. So Yitzchak made a nether. I will sacrifice myself to God. So he can't say, well, Kim Nisas Yitzchak. But Avraham never made any promises, so it's only Kim Nisos Avraham. So listen to what's happening here. The entire Akedah is a big question. Who has rights to Eretz Yisrael? Who has rights to Harabayas? Who has rights to the Temple Mount? Yishmo says, Eretz Yisrael belongs to me. The Temple Mount belongs to me. The Beis Hamikdash belongs to me. I am the ultimate Moiser Nefesh. So Yitzchak says, what are you talking about? Maybe I had Mila at eight days old, but if I would need to slaughter myself, I would do it. If God would say, be a carbon, I would do it. So now Hashem orchestrates everything. Hashem is pulling all the strings. Because until now, we don't really know who the spiritual heir of, Yitz- of Avraham is. The fact that Avraham threw Yishmael out of the house means absolutely nothing. I'll bring you a proof. Everything your wife tells you to do, you do because you really want to do it. Have you ever done something that your wife told you to do that you would have preferred not to do? Don't answer that question. <laughs> so just because Abraham threw Yishmael out of the house, because Sarah said, get, him, get rid of him, Shalom Bayis. Like people ask me, right? I said, well, why didn't you come to the shir? Yeah, my, wife, my wife didn't let me. I think to myself, why didn't let you? You haven't listened to a word your wife said in the last 50 years. All of a sudden when it comes to the shir, you're worried about Shalom Bayis. Right? So here it is. Abraham throws Yishmael out of the house. He has no choice. If Abraham wants to eat supper tomorrow, he has to get rid of Yishmael. But now God says, none of this getting rid of Yishmael because Sarah told you to. Bring him back. And I'm bringing him back for one night. And what I want you to say is that you only have a son, one son. You only have one only son. You only have one son that you love. So Hashem says, Kach noez bincha. Avram says, I don't know who you're talking about. Es yichidcha. Avram says, I don't know who you're talking about. Asher ahavta. God, I don't know who you're talking about. Es yitzchak. Avraham, I want you to know that Yishmael is not bincha. Yishmael is not yichidcha. Yishmael is not ahavta. Only yitzchak. So Avram says, what can I do? Now it's not only that I'm listening to Sarah. Now I'm listening to the Rebani Shalaylam. So they start heading to the Harabayas. Vayares hamakoim meirachoik says the Medrash. Avraham says to Yitzchak, Yitzchak, you see the Shechina on the Harabayas? Yitzchak says, I see it. Avraham turns to Eliezer. Eliezer, you see the Shechina? See what? Avraham turns to Yishmael, you see the Shechina? Yishmael says, I don't see nothing. Avram says, Shavu lachem payim achamar. Not only you are not Bani, not only are you not Yechidi, not only do I not love you, you know who you are? You're a donkey. God wanted Avraham to reject 
Yishmael and Yishmael's claim to Harabayas and Yishmael's claim to Eretz Yisrael and that Avraham should say that Yishmael is a donkey not because Sarah told him to because he realizes that Yishmael has no appreciation of Harabayas that Yishmael looks at Harabayas and he sees nothing Yishmael's connection to Harabayas is the connection of a donkey sometimes a donkey can make his way onto the Harabayas Sometimes Yishmaelim could make their way there, but they're not connected to it. The Akedah demonstrates that Yishmael has no connection to Eretz Yisrael. Now, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky has a, an amazing chap over here. Because after this conversation, does anybody know in the storyline, so Yishmael and uh, Yitzchak have this conversation where uh, Yitzchak says, I have a bris milah. And Yishmael said, what are you talking about? I have bris milah at age 13. Do we find in the Torah immediately after that, Vayihi achari hadvarm ha'ela v'alekim nisos Abraham? No. There's actually another story in between the bris of Yitzchak and Yishmael and the Akedah. Does anybody know what's the story that's interposed between the bris of Yitzchak and Yishmael and the Akedah? A political event. A peace treaty between Avraham and Avimelech. That basically Avimelech, I mean this, this could be like the news every week. Avimelech is what? What does he do for a living? He lives in Gaza. And he wants the Gaza Strip. And Avraham says, sure, I'll make a treaty with you. I'll give you Gaza. Well, you know, we'll, we'll remove all the Jewish homes out of Gaza. We'll give you Gaza, and we're going to sign that it belongs to you. Why, according to Rashi, where the Akedah is in the aftermath of the contention between Yitzchak and Yishmael, where Yishmael says, I'm a bigger Moser Nefesh, and Yitzchak says, I'm a bigger Moser Nefesh, and that God says, you know what, Yitzchak is much bigger, because if I would tell Yitzchak to slaughter himself, he would do it, why does the Torah interpose the episode of Avimelech and Avraham? Now, just as an aside, there's an amazing Rashbam. The Rashbam says, Dover uh, Oyem Anoira. Rashbam says that the Akedah is in the direct aftermath of Avraham giving away land in Eretz Yisrael. Says the Rashbam, we are never authorized to give away land in Eretz Yisrael. The moment you give away land in Eretz Yisrael, you're jeopardizing Jewish life. Avraham, I gave you the Gaza, this is the Rashbam, to give it away to the Philistines? You give away land in Eretz Yisrael, I will tell you to take your child and slaughter him. Those are the repercussions when you give away land in Eretz Yisrael. That's the Rashbam. It's a Rishon, Rashi's uh, grandson. Rashbam says, when you give away Eretz Yisrael, you're jeopardizing Jewish life. But that's not how Rashi learns. Rashi learns that the Akedah is in the direct aftermath of the Brismila of Yitzchak and Yishmael, where Yishmael said, I'm a bigger Moiser Nefesh, because I have Brismila. So why does the Torah interject the peace treaty be- between Avraham and Abimach? So Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky writes, an amazing chap, he says, throughout Tanakh, the Philistines are the quintessential Arelim. Philistines are always called Arelim. A Philistine, when you, when you see the word Palishti, right after it, whether it's in Shmuel or in Devei Ayamim, Palishtim Arelim, Palishtim Arelim, Palishtim Arelim. Says Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, you might get very scared of Yishmael. Because we know the Zayar teaches us that Yishmael has a certain right to be in Eretz Yisrael until the Mashiach comes in the merit of his bris milah. So you might get scared. After all, we're Jews, and Eretz Yisrael belongs to us. So we may get, we may get scared that Yishmael is going to take over all of Eretz Yisrael. Bizchus hamila. So the Torah before the Akedah gives us one little piece of information. Don't get too caught up in the zchus of bris milah. Bris milah is a zchus, but it's not such a big zchus. You know how we know it's not such a big zchus? Because the plishtim live in Gaza. And the plishtim are Arelim. They don't even have a bris milah. So before you get worried about the zchus of Yishmael, that Yishmael has a bris milah, and you think they're going to take over Eretz Yisrael, the first thing you need to know is bris milah is not the biggest zchus in the world. The Haraya, the Philistines live in the Gaza, and they have no bris milah. They are the definition of Arelim. And this is the backdrop for the Akedah, because the Akedah demonstrates that Yishmael is a chamar. 
Yishmael is nothing. Yishmael has no connection to the Harabayas. They don't even see the Shechina. And therefore at the end of the Akedah, the Rebbein Shalom tells Klal Yisrael, V'yirash zaracha eishar oyevav. Not soinav. I'll tell you a very interesting diok. When Lovan and Besuel give a bracha to Rivka, the bracha they give is V'yira zarach eishar soinav. Because Lovan and Besuel know who's going to come out of Rivka, Yaakov and Esav. So the bracha is Yaakov should overcome Esav. But Esav has nothing to do right now. Esav has no connection to the Akedah. The Akedah is all about Yitzchak and Yishmael. And therefore the bracha is V'yira zarach eishar oyevav. Let's, let's detour for a little bit. Let's talk about Yishmael's mother for a moment. Who's Yishmael's mother? Hagar. Hagar had a rotten kid, Pera Adam. We suffered from Yishmael for 2,000 years. Anybody know why did we suffer from Yishmael for 2,000 years? The Ramban says a frightening revelation. The Ramban says, Sarah is married to Avram for many years, they can't have children. So, Sarah says, I have a great idea, take Hagar, Ula Yibana Mimena. Maybe I'll have children from her and I'll be Zoha to re- be rebuilt through her. So, Bebiyari Shaina Chazal say, Hagar immediately conceived and she had a child. And all of a sudden, she has a child. She goes to Sarah. Vatekal gevirta be'enah. She looks down on Sarah, right? As the ultimate hypocrite, the Arabs, right? This is pure Arab hypocrisy. Oh, you think you're so righteous, Sarah? You're married to the tzaddik for 90 years. You can't have a kid. And me, right away, I'm much more, much more righteous than you. So Sarah had tainas on uh, Abraham. Sarah comes to Abraham. You didn't stick up for me. Why don't you stick up for me? So Avram says to his wife, you take her, do whatever you want, abuse her. You know, put her in her place. So the Pasuk says, if you look at number 18, Sarai. Sarah afflicted, Sarah abused Hagar, she insulted her. Says the Ramban, what's the aftermath of Sarah abusing Hagar? The aftermath is, The Malach says, terrorist attacks, bombings, balloon bombings, grenades, this is going to be your nachas. Says the Ramban, why did we suffer from Yishmael for 2,000 years? Because Sarah hurt the feelings of Hagar. Sarah hurt Hagar's feelings. And because she hurt her feelings, we suffer for 2,000 years. How many ritzichas, how many attacks, how much pain, how much suffering, only because Sarah insulted Hagar. It's a frightening thought. Hagar wasn't a Jewish woman. There's no love in the Torah at that point of time. You can't insult somebody. But even so, imagine, imagine if somebody insults the feelings of another Yid, another Jew, how severe that is. But not all the Rishonim agree to the Ramban. Many Rishonim disagree with the Ramban. The Balei HaToys say, listen to this, Sorrow was not wrong for insulting Hagar. Sarah was allowed to insult Hagar. Sarah was correct to insult Hagar. Why was she correct to insult Hagar? The Riva quotes the Smag. And it's a very interesting halachic discussion. If somebody hurts a person monetarily, you're now to take revenge. That's Nakama. But if somebody insults you, are you allowed to hurt them back? Many Rishonim say yes that the Isra of Nakama only applies if somebody hurts you monetarily, not if somebody hurts your feelings. It's Machlokis Rishonim, the Chavetz Chaim Paskins L'Chumra. But any, in any event, the Riva, one of the Bali Atois, would say, Sarah was correct in insulting Hagar, because Hagar mistreated Sarah first. Hagar insulted Sarah, and if somebody insults you, you're allowed to insult them back. The Abar agrees with the Riva. 
that Barbanel says that Sorrow was correct for insulting Hagar. Sorrow did the right thing. If somebody insults you, you're allowed to insult them back. So I'm going to tell you a story. This is a story we once mentioned uh, on Shavuos night many years ago. It's a, a documented story in the writings of the Arizal. Rav Moshe Sternbach brings the story from the Chida. And the Chida himself found that this story is written in the Rishonim. We're going to go back for a moment. We're going to go back in time. We're going to go back to Yishai, the father of David HaMelech. Back to David. Tonight's the night of David HaMelech. And Yishai was one of the four people who never did Navera. And Yishai felt, he's the continuity of the Malchus based David, he figured his children would be able to have Malchus based David. But towards the end of Yishai's life, Yishai began to second guess himself. And Yishai said to himself, maybe Doyeg is right, maybe I'm not kosher, lovely Bekahal, maybe Boyaz was not allowed to marry Rus. And Yishai thought maybe his children are not kosher Jews. So the Chida brings in the Sefer Maris Ha'ayin HaMesech Tabsachim. In the name of the Talmud of the Rajbah, Rabbi Yaakov Sakili, that Yishai told his wife of a lifetime, it's been nice knowing you, have a good, have a good day, see you later. And he separated from his wife. He then took his shivcha, his maidservant, and he pre-positioned her. And he had a date with her for a certain night. And he was going to live with her. And he was going to have children from her. And the children from the shifcha would be what? Chamorim. Donkeys. Avodim. And then he would free them. And then they would be kosher Jews. Similar to the way Rav Tarfain says you could be machshir mamzerim. Yishai had a plan. He was going to marry a shifcha. The children would be slaves, he would free them, and now he finally would have kosher Jews as descendants. But this maidservant was loyal to the wife of Yishai. And the maidservant told Yishai's wife, and the maidservant gave Yishai's wife her clothing. And Yishai thought it was the maidservant, and it turned out to be his wife. A few months later, Yishai's wife is expecting, and everyone's saying, oh, mazel tov, mazel tov. You know, you, you sure are an old lady. I don't know how old she was. But Yishai had bigger problems with the age of his wife. Yishai held his wife was Mazana. And the child is a mamzer. And Yishai's children told Yishai, the child is a mamzer, we have to kill mama. And Yishai said, don't do it, it's not good for Shaduchim. Now he doesn't say that, but he told her not to do it. And when this little boy was born, the kids paskin, he was a mamzer. As David HaMelech says in Tehillim, Muzar HaYisi Le'echai. And they took him and threw him in the garbage. May Ashpois Yorim Evyoin, we say tomorrow. And they threw him to the dogs. Miyad Kelav Yichidasi. And they held, David was a mamzer. David was a mamzer. They paskin in the Bezdin. He's a mamzer. Does anybody know when they announced David wasn't a mamzer? A minute after Shmuel said that David is the next Malach Yisrael. A minute before that he was a mamzer. A minute later he's Malach Yisrael and Shmuel said he got the story wrong. Yishai, it was your wife, not the Shifcha. That's brought in Rishonim. I always saw in Narizal. It's brought in Rishonim. The Chida brings it from Rishonim. <laughs> Comes the Chida and he says one added thing. Says the Chida in the name of the Gurei Arizal. And who was this maidservant of? Shishai? Who is she? She's the Gilgal of Hagar. Why is she the Gilgal of Hagar? That Hagar mistreated Sarah. Hagar, Hagar abused Sarah. Hagar put down Sarah. So now Hagar comes back and has to be machnia and submit herself and lower herself before her mistress. And therefore she came back as a Gilgal and she gave up her cover to Eishas Yishai. So I just have one simple question. Do you really think that the only reason Hagar had to come back to this world is because she once said something not nice to Sarah? 
I think there's a bigger thing Hagar had to come back to this world for. That she brought a monster into the world. She brought Yishmael into the world. She brought the Pera Adam into the world. She brought this Am Hadoy Melech into the world. So if she came back to rectify the fact that she mistreated Sarah, don't you think she for sure had to come back to make up and to rectify the fact that she brought Yishmael into the world? Vashem Yohayor Einai, that she definitely did rectify this as well. Because we know, it is well known, that Klal Yisrael has two Mashiachs. We have Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. We have two Golosim in the end of days. The Medrash Shachar Tov tells us, the Arizal tells us, that all the four Golosim are two part Golos. Bavel Kazdi, Madai Paras, Yavon, Yavon and um, Alexander Mokdan, Macedonia, and Esa and Yishmael. We have two Golosim at the end of days. Esa and Yishmael. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up in America. So, I, you know, I always thought we're in Golos Esa, we're in Golos, we're in the Western world. And then, you know, since uh, the last 25 years, America, nobody's proud of America anymore. There's no America. What's America? Now we're in Golos Yishmael. In 25 years, you know, they did statistics. I don't know, in 40, 50 years, the whole European com- continent will be predominantly Arab. It's Yadoi Bakov, Yad Koba. We see that at the end of days, there are two Golosim. There's a Golos Edoim and Golos Esav. Golos Edoim and Golos Yishmael. We have two Mashiachs. The Gra writes, the reason why we have two Mashiachs, one Mashiach to take us out of Golos Edoim. And one Mashiach to take us out of Golos Yishmael. Yeah? So who's taking us out of Golos Adam and who's taking us out of Golos Yishmael? So let's define for a moment. What is Esav called? He's a par. He's a bull. He's a shar. He's a shar. Esav is a shar. And what's Yishmael? He's a chamar. So Mashiach ben Yosef will take us out of Golos Adam because Yosef is... Bechar Shaira Esa Yosef is a Shar. So Mashiach Hashar will take us out of the Golos of the Shar. And Yishmal is a Chamar. Who's going to be the Oni Viroichev al Chamar? Who's going to take us out of the Golos Chamar? Mashiach ben David. So Hagar brought into the world Yishmal. Hagar brought into the world the Para Adam, the Am Hadoy Melech Amor. So look how the Rebbein Shalom manipulates events as Masavev Kol HaSibuvim. That Hagar comes back to the world. This time Hagar is coming to the world to bring the antidote to Yishmael. Who's the antidote to Yishmael? Adoinenu David, Mashiach Tzidkenu. So she doesn't just come back because she abused Sarah. She comes back to rectify the fact she brought the Am Adoy Melech Hamar into the world. Now she'll bring into the world the Oni V'roi Cheval Hamar. Tell you an awesome thing. How much time do we have? A few minutes? Not a lot. Five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. Rabbi Ben Chaim is here and he's my next door neighbor so I have to treat him well, you know? Right? Shkayach. Rabbi Ben Chaim is the best neighbor. We have... We have uh, our houses are next to each other. The shuls are next to each other. All our kedusha comes from Rabbi Ben Chaim, from Rabbi Chaimov, right? So it all comes. It all comes. Uh, what goes around comes around. So five. He's gonna give me five more minutes. Okay. Shkayach. David Amelach is the shpizin of Hashanah Raba. The Oni Veroi Chival Chamor, who's gonna take us out of Golos Yishmoel, the Am Hadoy Melech Who's the Tsar of Ishmael? Who's the angel of Ishmael? We know that there are two bad guys. The angel of Esav is the Samach Mem, the Samach Mem Aleph Lamed. Samach Mem, right? Is the angel of Esav. It's a male. It's a male. But he has a wife. This wife is, the, is pure evil. This woman is Isha Ro Admoid. The angel of Yishmael is Avi Avoy Satoma. You know what her name is? Lilis. Lamed Yod, Lamed Yod, Tav. Gematria 480. 
480. Did you ever realize that everything good that ever happened to Klal Yisrael was after 480? If you look in Malachim, the Bayis Rishon was built after 480 years after we left Mitzrayim. 40 years in the Midbar, 440 in Eretz Yisrael. Bayis Sheni was 480 years after Bayis Rishon. Bayis Rishon was 410, Bayis Sheni was, um, and in between was 70 years, 480. After 480, because you see, we have to conquer Lilas. Lilas is 480. So after 480 years, after we leave Mitzrayim, we conquer Lilas. And then again, by Yesheni, another 480, we conquered her again. Oyo Mitzrayim is 480, says Megal Amukais. So when we leave Mitzrayim, what does Miriam do? She takes out her toif. Toif is 480. We knocked her into the ground. We got rid of Lilas. 480, 480, 480. But the greatest night of the year is after how many hours of Chodesh Tishrei? Hashanah Rabbah is the 21st day of Tishrei. That means we experienced how many hours so far? 20 days. What's 20 times 24? 480. Says Ramami Pano with a little bit of a twist. Besoif, we say in Kuf Nun of Tehillim. Hashanah Rabbah, we say Tehillim. The last chapter, Besoif. When you get up to 480, the 480th hour, Besaif, Umachayo, that's when the Mechila happens. After 480, after 480 hours of Chodesh Tishrei, I'll tell you a Rem is Nifla, Rameir Mi Pamishlan. We have Koyach, you know, Koyach, we have, we have strength. But we ask God, Kechlois Koychenu Al Tazvenu. When our strength wanes, do not forsake us. Take the word Koyach. The word koyach has the revealed part and a hidden part. The revealed part is kaf ches. The hidden part of koyach, kaf is spelled kaf pei, so pei. Ches is spelled ches taf. Pei and taf. 480. Kichlois koycheinu. When we have no more koyach left. I don't know about you, but this is a tiring month. Rosh Hashanah, whole day in Tefillah, second day Rosh Hashanah, Tzayim Gedalia, Aser Simei Tshuva, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Kechlois Koycheinu, we spend 480 hours, we say, Rebbein HaShalaylam, after 480 hours, Kechlois Koycheinu, Al Tazveinu, Rebbein HaShalaylam says, no problem, Besoif at hour 480, Umachel, the Mechila happens. Because when Lilis goes down, a moment before Hashanah Rabbah comes, you know why Lilis goes down? Because in comes David HaMelech. And David HaMelech is the Oni V'Roichiv Al Chamor, who gets rid of the Am HaDoi Melech Hamor. And knocks out Lilis for good. And we hope then, that tonight and tomorrow, when we say the tefillah, Harachamon, Hu Yokim, Lanu, Esukas, David Anoy Foles, because we say, Rebbein Shalom, the Bayis Rishon was built after 480 years. The Bayis Sheni was built after 480 years. The Bayis Shlishi will be built after the 480 hours of Chodesh Tishrei, heading into Hishana Rabbah. Besoif v'chinar. Now the Chassam Soifer says, Besoif is pronounced Tav Vav Pei, 486. So between hour 480, that's the onset of Hashanah Rabbah, and hour 486, that's Chatzoy Salayla, about right now, this is when it's happening. Thank you everyone for listening. And we should be Zoyche, Harachem, and Uyakam, Lanu, and Sukas, Dovin, Hanoi, Falas. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.